Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. I know you guys haven't seen me in a while, and this is one of the many reasons why. I don't really do car videos that much, uh, but this is a 1974 Dodge Dart four-door custom. And it's been sitting in my yard for ages. And uh, I just got to the point where I said, this I'm never going to get to this one. We're just going to have to part with it. So... I found, you know, because it had been sitting, the gas in the tank was all gelled up and the carburetor was all funky and buggered. So I went through the process of rebuilding the carburetor, cleaning out the fuel tank, and a bunch of other stuff. And after, you know, 10, 15 minutes of cranking, I finally was able to get it to start. Now, unfortunately, the early chunks of the video have been lost. Uh, I went to go put them all together. The files were corrupted, and apparently it corrupted before it backed it up because the backups were no good. So the footage of me rebuilding the carburetor and cleaning out the fuel tank is lost. Uh, but let me show you something I used to break down the varnish in the fuel tank first. And this is the stuff I use, the Startron Enzyme Fuel Tank Cleaner. Uh, this stuff works really well. And basically what I did was I put about maybe a cup, a little over a cup uh, worth into the fuel tank along with five fresh gallons of fuel, stirred it, and let it sit for two weeks. And that broke it all down. And then you have the problem, of course, there's no fuel getting up to the fuel pump because everything's evaporated out of the lines, blah, blah, blah. So, <clears throat> as ghetto fabulous as it is, what I did was, is I took a shop vac and I pressurized the fuel tank with the exhaust of the shop vac. <clears throat> and I had a catch can up top and I just pushed the gas up to the fuel pump and then once it was checked there, I pushed it up to the, the top of the carburetor again by pressurizing the tank. It took a while, but it worked. <clears throat> and then I had to fiddle with the choke linkage, which was broken and uh, connect everything else up. But the video picks up where I finally got it to turn over and start and get it running. And it was running very poorly, which you'll see in the video. And then pretty much everything after that was just the process of working out all the bugs and getting it drivable so that it would actually move on its own. Uh, and there's still a lot of issues with that carburetor. I would probably replace it if I had the money, but I don't. But it runs and it drives as of now, and it will pick up to good speed, so... Anyway, without further ado, we'll pick up the video where it starts off, me actually getting the car running for the first time in many years, and go from there. So hope you guys enjoy. It's running. Not running great, but been sitting for five years. Uh, let's see. Let's do a little tweaking.
definitely needs some more work, but it's at least running. We got to do something about this. This had some uh, serious dry rot. Sidewall failure, as you can see. It's completely separated here. There's a nice big hole. I had to use the bumper jack to get it up enough to put a real jack underneath it because I wouldn't trust that to hold a car to save my life. They were high failure and they fell on people. So let's get this off. I got a spare in the trunk. That's good. Needs some air, but it's good. And the handle on the jack also doubles as your lug wrench and your pry bar to get the hub cap off. That is, if I have the one-handed skills to get it off. Yep, y'all see this has been sitting a while. My goal here is to get this car operational and sell it. Tried to sell it a couple years ago and then the, got tired of the tire kickers and people that realized it was a project and they were scared to work on it. But I need the yard space back and I also need to get those two running. Not sure which one of those two I'll keep yet, but this one's gonna go. All right, I'm gonna need two hands for this, so let me get these lugs off. All right, we can definitely see that these tires have seen better days. We've got massive sidewall failure there. Axle seal looks like it's leaking. Like I said, it's been sitting a while. This needs carrier bearing, pinion bearing. It's old. See that? Twitch, twitch, twitch. We got a critter living up in there. Probably not one that I want to tangle with. There's a lot of black widows around here. I don't need to get bit by one of those. All the egg sacs and stuff, they just cover this car. <clears throat> I'm probably going to have to end up bug bombing the interior. Get rid of all the critters before I start driving it. All right, let's get the spare out of here. Pardon my croopiness, the uh, air quality today is really junk. Not as bad as LA gets, but not good either. <clears throat> Part of an accelerator pump cup. Obviously no good anymore. All right. Now this needs to be aired up. It's a little low, but it's not terrible. Thank God that was just a rock. I thought that was a screw or something. At this point, I'm just trying to get the car mobile. So, uh, let's get that on there, and then we'll air it up. Okie dokie, you got the new tire on, got the dead one in the trunk, I'll get that changed out for a used spare or something like that soon, but that's uh, at least of my problems right now. I'm going to do a quick walk around here. These ones are still holding air, not great, but they're holding air. That one's getting pretty low. Gotta air that one up before it goes flat. 
air that one up. That one's doing the best of them all. See if you let them go, pressure gets too low, it loses the bead. Or in the case of this one, this one rotted. So let's go get the tire inflator. Okay. So I got my little portable inflator. And this is probably the, for the money, this is the best one that you can buy at Harbor Freight. I think it's like $35 or something. But it's been very good and it has not broken yet. Knock on wood. Tough to do this with one hand, so bear with me. <clears throat> Come on. All right. So there it is. And it's not terrible. Like I said, it's about $35. Comes with a little air hose attachments for uh, sports balls and things like that down here, mattresses. So we're gonna use this to air up the tires. Surprisingly, the gauge is pretty accurate, so I actually can trust the gauge. But uh, let's get the battery connected and uh, air up some tires. There's our front passenger, or excuse me, front driver. It's about what I thought, about 18 PSI. So It's pretty high volume, it'll pump this up fairly quick. Take it up to about 30. That's about two bar. there yeah good enough Move on to the next one. Here's that spare we just put on. You can see it's pretty low. This one's going to take a while, so we'll just let it do its thing. We'll come back to this one in a little bit. All right, so that's about enough of that. This one's got a valve cap. Ooh. Okay, next one. Like that uh, sun rotted locking handle right there? That's pretty fancy. Oh, yeah. Front passenger is about 15. We'll let it do its thing. <laughs> it looks worse than it is because it's sitting on that paving stone. I have no idea why that's there. I still have to get a retainer clip and spring for the uh, transmission kick down and the choke pull off. And I've tried rebuilding this carburetor, but the body of it I think has got a leak somewhere because it sure does run really lean, even if you do bother to mess with the jetting. So, I don't know what I can do to tweak it or if I just have to break down and buy another carb. But, uh, yeah, this, it's got a crack in the metering rod, which I welded. And a um, bunch of other stuff wrong with it. I tried, but uh, it runs at least. Almost there. Good. 
All right, on to the rear passenger. About 19 or 20. <laughs> Okie dokie, we'll just let it air up. All right, mission accomplished on that one. I'm pretty sure the accelerator pump in this still doesn't work right. Let's see if it goes squirty birdie. Oh, it does. All right, I did fix that problem. That's good. Let's attach our choke. See, I need a, one of those fancy clips that go there. We'll see if she'll start. Okay. I know none of the dash electrical works yet, so... Shaking pretty bad. Old gas. Smoothing out though. No, you gonna stall? Come on. <laughs> oh, that stinks. Uh, smell of old gas. I thought I got most of that out of there. Without dropping the tank, you can only do so much. Look at how dirty it's making those plants. Come on, idle for me. It's trying. All right, so I need a spring for the kick down. And I need something to hold that in place. Let's see if I can find anything. Okay, so I got me an old paper clip, wrapped it around the linkage and around the uh, bracket that holds it. Uh, found a spring for the transmission kick down pullback. Um, but yeah, it ain't, ain't going nowhere. So that should do it. It's got full range of motion too, so that's good. Put the air cleaner back on it, button it up. I'm hoping that my radiator ain't leaking and that's just spillover. Because otherwise I'm going to be a little bit peeved about that. Let's put it back together and flick the key. All back together. I also noticed while I was in here that the uh, shifter grommet is pretty much gone. You can see it ain't there anymore. So that's got to get changed. I'll order one of those. Those are cheap. Old car. All right, I put five gallons of fresh gas in it and blew the old stuff out. That's better. Oh yeah. Much better. Still need to fix the voltage regulator on the instrument cluster. That stereo ain't staying in here. 
put that in my truck. Idle's good though. I need to get get the uh, grommet fixed for the shift linkage. I'll order up one of those and we'll pop one of those in. It's running good. Thing just purrs. It's a slant six. What do you expect? Smoothest running engine ever made. That's after it's been sitting a while. The transmission, they're pretty worn out on this. I know that the rear end's worn out, so. But I, like I said, just want to make it run and drive, and then next person can deal with it. I gotta clean out this engine bay too. So we'll get a shift grommet ordered up for the transmission. So far though, runs good, has a healthy exhaust note. Much better than before. Well, that's all for today. Okay, today we're gonna give a try at replacing the uh, shift grommet, which hard to tell. It's that thing right there. That's your shift lever, and it's just kind of flopping around in there and it's preventing the transmission from engaging properly so it's a common problem on these and <clears throat> there's talk on the internet going years back about Transstar part uh, but I caught all the trans shops and they say you can't get that so then on the a bodies only forum somebody suggested getting a grommet kit which is part number 14041 and somehow he's able to make this work so we're going to get a this is a generic uh, bushing kit for Dodge Ford GM shift and clutch linkage so yeah we're going to give a stab at this and see if we can get this to work not so sure if it will or not but there's nothing else out there short of making bushings out of grommets and copper sleeves and things which i don't have on hand so this was cheap and easy this was about 12 bucks we're going to give it a shot and see if i can find one of these that'll fit in there so getting the old one off was pretty easy it was all cracked and crumbling so i just popped the rest of it off with a screwdriver there's your bare metal piece of linkage there's the hole it goes into. I kind of cleaned it out a little bit with a brush. Um, that's me denting my fender. But yeah, so we need to find a way to get a bushing that fits in there. And they have various sizes. So let's open this thing up and check them out. So as you can see, they have uh, various sizes with different holes here. This being the smallest one. And the next smallest one, bigger and super big. And then they've got this funny little retainer clip here, which we're probably not going to be using. So it has to do two things. It has to fit into the shifter hole, and it also has to fit the linkage through and hold it in place. So it's just going to be a trial and error process. I really don't know which one's going to fit until I mess with them. So I'm just going to get to that, and then I'll show you which one worked. All right, so on first initial try, these two absolutely do not work. <clears throat> this one does not fit into the hole or the shift column. Uh, this one barely fits, but it's a little too loose and sloppy, and obviously the hole for the linkage is too tiny. This one's just radically too large. This is close, but it's very tight, and it's not easily pushed into the position. So what somebody recommended was that we immerse it in hot water to soften it and that will help get it in the hole and this one's pretty damn close to what the uh, actual linkage is supposed to be so we're gonna go with the uh, the upper sized one here the three out of four and I'm gonna see if it's possible to uh, to put it all together and uh, get it in 
Oh, some hot boiling water in a old Pyrex cup, and we're just going to let this thing sit here for a little bit. Let it get good and hot, and that will soften the plastic and ease our entry into the shifter linkage. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to make it even easier, and I'm going to find some grease, and we're going to grease up all the points so that things just kind of pop together. So I'm just going to take my finger with some grease on it and just put it all up in here. Make sure this is all greased and happy. And hopefully between softening the plastic and the greased up parts, it'll just fit in here. Well, knowing my luck, it won't. <laughs> but it doesn't fit in here by default. It doesn't just press in. It's very firm. And rather than crack and break the part, it's easier just to soften it and put some lubrication in the points where it's going to fit into. And that should make it easier to go in, which is precisely what I want. And I'll grease up the rod here that's supposed to go into that bushing. And we'll see if that makes a difference. Alright, it was a massive struggle. But I did manage to finally get it pushed in. While the plastic is still hot, you have to do it really fast so that the plastic doesn't cool down. I'm sorry for the shakes, but that's just going to have to be how it is. Um, and then you can see it. Well, maybe you can't. But I uh, pushed the rod through. I had to use a set of channel locks because that was the only thing that would fit. And I put the brake on and put it in reverse and that gave me a little more leverage room. And I finally popped it through. And so the bushing's in there and uh, it shifts. But now I need to make some sort of a retainer because obviously this is just exposed whatever and it could push back through, so I don't want that. So this has got a ridge in it. I could either use an E-clip or I could see if another one of those bushings will fit over top of it as a retainer. Maybe I'll mess with that idea, but that's it's in there at least. So it does work. It's a pain in the ass to get in there, but it is possible. Um, so let me see if I can find or use one of these other grommet things as a retainer. Yeah, so really none of the other grommets work for uh, for a retainer. So I'm probably going to end up just using some MacGyver thing until I can find an E-clip or something that works. Alright, so I got a old paper clip that I just doubled up around here to keep this from popping out. It's got a tail on it so that it shouldn't move too far. But eventually I'll get an E-clip on it. So I just want to show you what it's like through the rotation of uh, gear selection. Right now it's in reverse. That's part. That's neutral. Reverse, second, drive, neutral, reverse, part. So, it ain't perfect by any means, but uh, it's better than not having one. And for what's available until somebody starts repopping those things without having to buy the entire linkage set, that's kind of where we're at with this. So, uh, just for grins and giggles, I'm going to give it a start since it's been sitting for a while, a couple days. And I think I got most of the bad gas out. I put new gas in it a couple days ago. No new leaks or anything. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a turnover. All right, give it a couple pumps. Solenoid kicked out. why it ain't starting today. Didn't have an issue yesterday. 
All right, so it looks like the choke never set. Let's uh, get the air cleaner off. So it looks like our little paperclip doohickey caused the choke to bind. So I need to find a different location for this, I guess. Because now it closes. And maybe that'll help things. Definitely wants that choke. Oh yeah, and I found a broken ground wire. So I did get my gauges to work. It's registering the pittance of fuel I have in there. Just gotta let her warm up. I relocated the little clip so that it wouldn't bind. Let's go uh, get the air filter back together. A nice healthy exhaust note. Well, the Dorman Grama kit, I only used one out of the five pieces, but it allowed me to fix the problem down there in the shift bushing land. So that'll work for now. That'll get it so that I can shift it into gear properly and it'll drive. So that's all for today. And then uh, maybe next time we'll be able to take this thing for a drive and see what it does. I definitely need to get the engine bay cleaned up, but uh, maybe we'll worry about that later. It's kind of bugging me. Okay, back on the dart again today. Uh, we have a, a problem that we need to address. Uh, and that is, upon trying to back out of the driveway to give it a little test run, uh, I found that anything more than about half throttle, it would stumble and fall on its face and die like it was starving of fuel. But when I let off the gas, immediately it would come back. It wouldn't stall, it would immediately come back. And uh, <clears throat> so that's not indicative of a low float bolt condition because usually if you starve it, it just stalls. It doesn't come back. So then we need to look at the power circuit. And uh, on these, that's a power valve that's activated by vacuum. And I was looking at the carburetor diagrams and there's one little point that came to concern that uh, I remember being an issue when I was reassembling it uh, during the rebuild process. Let's take this off of here. I can do that. And that had to do with the plunger that kept the power valve off, which is this guy down here. And normally that's there's supposed to be something that pushes up on that when the throttle's closed. But when you open the throttle, it's supposed to lower that bar with it. And as we can see, it doesn't. So <clears throat> there is a problem with that mechanism. Now I think what it is, is there's a spring that controls that valve. And I think the placement of that spring is crucial to, uh, to the operation of that. And I see that I made an assembly error here. I don't know if we can see if we come around here. But anyways, that spring is attached somewhere back where my finger is. And it shouldn't be there. So I'm going to try to move it to a better location uh, to where that's gonna make that work. So let me see if I can do that. I'm gonna need two hands for sure. Okay, so I moved the position of the spring via the throttle return linkage rather than a fixed position. Now, when we open the throttle, 
we see that the power valve also opens proportionally. Uh, so that's more like what it's supposed to be. And you know, when the engine's running, the vacuum will be pulling that up. Um, so that should help things. But really, it's just a matter of starting it, seeing it at this point, how it behaves. All right, let's see how she does now. Uh, helps to hook up the battery. All right, take two. Time to replace that starter. All right, let's check and see if the choke popped open again. Yeah, it looks like we might have flooded it. Yeah, bugger. All right, I'm gonna keep trying until I get it running, and then we'll see what it behaves like. Definitely flooded it. but likes that fast idle. All right, we're gonna let it warm up and then we'll see if the carburetor behaves differently. It's pretty cold this morning, it's about 48. All right, we'll come back to this. All right, she's all warmed up. I'll deal with the choke linkage later. Registrations on it. Gonna go take it for a spin and see how it does. This ought to be fun. idling okay and it gets up and it moves but it still doesn't have a good open throttle response and that could be remnants of shitty gas that could be still issues with the carburetor I just needed to drive around town really there ain't nobody coming dude hurry up and go See, if I hammer it, it just hesitates. Sputters, shakes. And it was doing that before I messed with the power valve circuit, which wasn't opening at all. So this is better than it was, but it's still wrong. horrible rear end noise. That's pretty bad. Idle's good though, and just low speed driving's fine, so there's definitely still issues with the carburetor, but I may not be able to deal with that. There was major problems with this when I took it apart. But just a low speed around town driving's fine. You hear it knocking and pinging and stuff. Should be fun trying to get up this hill. Of course, the motherfuckers are gonna follow me. Yeah, I don't like. 
like that. So I wonder if it's too much fuel because it's knocking a lot. It's okay until you get into that power circuit at more than half throttle and then it really gets aggravated. And there's a delay, it's not like it's instant. So you mash on it, the vacuum pulls, and then it starts uh, sputtering. So maybe I need to tweak the vacuum circuit a bit. There is an adjustment for that. Which the service manual doesn't really want to tell you about, they just say it's factory adjusted. But turn signals by metallic as long as you're in low speed you're only doing less than half throttle and it's sufficient windshields dirty but yeah that's whatever all right so let's get this thing uh, tweaked a little bit all right so on the 1945 you have usually a plug here, which I've removed, and you've got a hex key, which is usually about three millimeters. This one's maybe three and a half. Uh, I have a three that fits. So this is your power valve uh, vacuum adjustment. So when you turn it clockwise, you're putting more pressure on the tension spring to aid the valve in opening. So clockwise is richer counterclockwise is leaner and this one is turned down pretty deep so I'm going to back it out a couple turns and we're going to see if that changes our drivability at all and silly me I put Loctite in here so let me deal with that and then we'll turn it all right so we back three turns out we're going to see if that has any effect on anything. Well, that was easy. All right, let's see what she does. Woo! Much better. She was just running a little too fast. Still a little hesitation, so we'll back it off another turn. So far, so good. The initial takeoff is boggy. Much better. Still gets a little cranky with that full throttleness. figure it out. Much better. We just got to smooth that transition from the idle to the power circuit so that it doesn't happen too soon and it gets bogged.
let's go tweak on this some more. If I just come from a dead stop and mash it, it doesn't work too well. If I'm already part of throttle and I get on it, it works pretty good. Another thing I've noticed is that if I turn the ignition key to the start position, which bypasses the ballast, but the starter won't turn because it's not in neutral safety, it'll pick up and go just fine. So I may have a weak spark condition that I need to take care of too. We need to check our cap and rotor and stuff like that. So far, pretty good. It's that midpoint throttle bog if you get on it. I mean, it doesn't smell lean and it doesn't smell rich. But if you just mash your foot on the gas, we'll just try to stall. Yeah, I had to put the camera down for a second get it back into first so it would uh, bring itself back. So I don't know if that's, we're losing spark, the spark's being extinguished, if it's still a mixture problem, which it could very well be, because like I said, the body of this thing was pretty, the body of this carburetor was pretty messed up. Watch what happens when I bypass the ignition. Just mash it. Picks up fine until I let off the ignition. And then it goes back to regular spark through the ballast and then it, it falls on its face. So maybe look at some ignition issues next. But it's getting there. All right, so just checking electrical here. I got my meter hooked to one side, which is the positive of the coil. And on the other side, uh, I should be able to see the hot lead on the ballast here. The dual ballast should be the top one. All right, so we have continuity there. And then I need to measure that and make sure it's the proper values. This is supposed to be 5 ohm. This is supposed to be 1 ohm. So let's see what those are. All right, so on the bottom section... I've got 5.6 ohms. And on the top section, I got 1.5 ohms. So that should be correct because the hot side of the coil, um, that's on the 1.5 ohm side. These are keyed, it's not like you can put them in wrong, but. Let's double check the wiring diagram and make sure that that's correct. All right, so the ballast wiring is correct for the technician diagram. Uh, pin three should be our coil. It's eight ohms. Nope, I should be at the low side of it. 19 ohms, that's not right either. There's our, our negative. Still seems a little low to me. It should be zero. Like there's a resistance wire there. Like that's 10 ohms off ground. But I should have... I should have continuity between... Let's see, where is it? This wire here... 
this is the black wire with the stripe which is what I'm connected to here on the coil so there should be like zero ohms there and there isn't there's like almost two ohms resistance and so when we come up here and we see two ohms of resistance between there and the coil that's not good because that two ohms is power being lost and uh, you may not think that's a big deal but uh, in a 12 volt circuit two ohms is a big deal and that's going to drop the voltage across the coil and that's going to lower the spark which may be why we're having issues uh, now one thing to do would be to get a clip lead and run it between that pin and the proper pin on the coil and see if that's the issue we may have a bad crimp too it's really hard to tell I need to set this meter up so that I can get a better reading and then maybe jiggle the wire on that coil and see if that changes anything. Alright, so if I come over here and I jiggle this wire and pull on it, we can see that that changes quite a bit. And the clip popped off here. Let me reattach that. And now we're at 0.06. I'm going to grab the wire at the crimp and jiggle it again. You can see that every time I move this, there's a different response. So it may be that this crimp is bad. It's got oxide in it or something like that. Because it was two ohms before. And now that I wiggled it a bunch, it's happier. So I think I may redo that crimp. So that definitely cured the uh, stumbling. The bad crimp on that ignition wire was causing all the loss, which was probably uh, creating intermittent operation for the switching box and it couldn't really deal with it. Now when I get on it, it shifts fine, doesn't stumble, doesn't shake. So that makes me happy. see what it does off the line that's kind of the big test all right fucking runs great Transmission's definitely seen better days. It's sloppy and it slips. But like I said, it's an around town car. Responds well. That makes me happy. stumble and doesn't shake. That's what it was. So we got it running good enough with the crummy ignition then with the good one it ran great. All right. All right we've accomplished a decent amount today. Definitely still need to come up with a better retainer for that choke because the, uh, the choke pull off needs to stay in place when it's cold. But uh, I think after we're done with that I think I'll probably scrape the remainder of this uh, Landau top off, rub it down, rough it up, and uh, put maybe a self-etching primer and just some basic paint on it just so that it doesn't rust anymore. But uh, it's coming along much better. And then we're done with this one. We need to tackle this Valiant here. And then eventually the 69 GT, which I'm still debating whether I want to keep or not. Kind of want to keep it. It's a two-door, no post. 
be a good candidate for a six speed. Yeah, but that's for another time. Okay, so we got the uh, choke clip thing handled. And you can see there's a little choke clip thing there. And uh, what I did was I bought a pack of these universal linkage clip assortment. It's a Dorman number 41017. And it's a bunch of them in different sizes, but there are two sizes that fit with a little persuasion. I had to crimp those a little bit tighter so that they would grab. But as you can see, it'll set the choke without binding. So let's see if it actually works well. I also uh, scraped all the remaining of the vinyl top off. And I still need to trim around the windshield and pull the trim up and do that. But it was just barely hanging on, which made for easy removal. But it's definitely trapped a lot of moisture inside. Uh, you can see there, there's some rot there. But worse than that was the pillar. And you can see the pillar there is pretty badly chooched. Same with the driver's side. I'll show you the driver's side. That's why I hate vinyl tops. It's because they trap moisture. Now, if this thing were parked inside, it would have been a different story. But you can see this one's pretty bad, too. So all this has got to get cleaned up. And we need to put a rust inhibitor in there. And I'm not going to do metallurgy on that because I don't know how. And I'm just going to fill it and seal it. And then we'll uh, just do a basic self-etching primer and then regular primer and then paint and then a top coat and just hope it holds up and the next person can deal with it but uh it's on the road it's registered i'm going to put it up for sale and hopefully someone will rescue it and make it a nice project for themselves or a kid in auto shop or something like that will take care of it but uh let's start it up Fires right up. Fast idle's coming up. Wasn't quite ready for it yet. Maybe I can adjust that fast eye a little bit when it uh, settles down a bit. There we go. Yeah, it needs to come up just a little bit. So this is going to get in the way a bit, but that's your fast idle right there. Hey, this is the best title. Or did it miss the cam? Nope, that's the fast title. Well, something ain't right there. Yeah, so the cam was skewing. It wasn't quite setting up right. You can see when I turn it, it wants to come off the cam. Like that, which means this is coming out, and I need to reseat that back in there. That's lovely. One more thing to fix.
Yeah, I gave it a couple of love taps with a hammer to seat it better, and it's kind of sort of okay. It just is what it is, I guess. All right, I'm going to give it a quick wash down, and then we'll put some gas in it, drive it around, and then put it up for sale. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, kind of weird montage of videos to get this thing back on the road. But uh, more videos to come. Just don't know when I'll have the time. <laughs>